This program is brought to you by Hungry Jacks and Bunnings Trade. Well, it's a team sport, but we love some individual brilliance. And in that category, there's a couple of players on this list for the MVP that I reckon we will be hearing about long into the season, most of which the known commodity, Bryce Cotton, one of the best players, if not the best, we have ever seen in the NBL leading the market, as he does every year. He's always a good bet, especially at this price. And tell you what, that price probably won't drift out too much further than that. They will always keep him safe. Tyler Harvey, the Illawarra Hawks have a good year. And I'll tell you what, more points, the better for the MVP market. But the one that I like here, $51 he opened at, Vic Law and the Perth Wildcats. He's coming a long way. I'm happy to take him. So I reckon he's the value pick in your Bet With Mates group if you want to throw him in there. Enjoy and gamble responsibly. If the number one sporting franchise in Australia asks you to join, you can't say no. And Vic Law, former Brisbane Bullets star, said yes. Left the Bullets and joined the Wildcats. And tonight is Vic Law's first game against his old team, giving Perth arguably the best dynamic duo in the country. Welcome to what might be the Vic Law Bryce Cotton Show, but one man who could upset the lot of them, the junkyard dog, Nathan Sobey. Great to have your company wherever you might be watching. Great to have the company of Melbourne United Championship winner, Peter Hooley, and the number one journo in the game, former NBL player Liam Santa Maria. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Dwayne. Excited for this one. Uh, the Wildcats, of course, they are flying. Two and zip start for them. And the Bullets, well, geez, it's been a long wait for James Duncan's squad. They played in the opening game of the season, went down in Tasmania, and they've had to wait till the final game of round two to uh, bounce back from that one. Well, it's always a tough task to go to Perth, but they have arrived early enough because you've got to slow down that man. He was excellent in their second game of round one. Vic Law was outstanding. They've still got those injuries to come back, but some top landfills stepping into this one. Dilemma players have really stepped up already, but I'm looking forward to how round two finishes off. Sobe v Cotton worth the price of admission alone. Big matchup, no doubt about it. I mean, these two were first and third in MVP voting last season, first and second in scoring. There you see 23 and a half a game for Cotton last year, 21 for Sobe, both operating at a really high level and have started strongly. Sobe, of course, he'll be frustrated with how things finished up in Tasmania, but Cotton, he's coming off the back of that 31 point explosion against the Taipans. He was massive in this game and just the Taipans started really strongly and they had their best defender in Tajir McCall on Vic Law. Did a great job but then they let this man get going. That's going to be the hardest question every time you play the Wildcats. Who do you send your best defender to? Vic Law or Bryce Cotton? Because guarantee if one's quiet the other one's not going to be. He certainly wasn't. Looked like he was going for about 50 at one stage. Good to see Bryce Cotton back in action. And another big crowd expected. Game one here, 11,950. Game two, 10,800. And they've packed into the jungle again. And they enjoyed having a little bit of NBL royalty back. They cheered Damien Martin earlier when he walked out on the floor. Short time ago, he caught up with Bullets coach James Duncan. I'm here with Brisbane Bullets coach James Duncan. James, the obvious question, how do you stop Bryce Cotton? I think that's a question that the whole league's been dealing with for the last few years. Um, we just contest his shots, make things difficult for him. That's that's our focus. We don't try to get it overblown or anything like that. Bryce is going to do what he does and just make sure that everything's contested and just a physical game with him. And obviously Vic Law played for the Brisbane Bullets last season. Did you go to some of your current players and ask them for a scout on their former teammate? Well, I had to scout with Brisbane, so I know what Vic can do. Um, another guy that can put the ball in the basket. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the guys know about him. They're excited to play him. Um, but our focus isn't just Vic and, and Cotton. The, there's more to Perth than just those two guys. And you actually have a rich history with the Wildcats head coach, Scott Morrison. Can you tell us a little bit about that history? College days, way back, a long, long time ago. Um, he has mutual friends of mine, um, former teammates of mine. Um, yeah, Scott has done amazing things in his career. It's interesting that we're meeting back up here in Australia where he's coaching Perth and Brisbane, but um, we're excited about you know, competing against each other, but we're both Canadians. Once the game is done, we're, we're friendly. We're a friendly country. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck tonight, mate. It's great to have you both out here. Thank you. To the DoorDash starting fives. DoorDash, your delivery MVP. Head to the DoorDash app now and get zero delivery on orders over $20, but use the code DELI.
We spoke about the development players. Kyle Zunick into the starting five again. He started all of round one with Mitch Norton out. Luke Travers had 14 rebounds in their last game. Majuk Majuk's been excellent coming off that Achilles injury. And there we see it. Number 12, Todd Blanchfield back in the lineup. And for the Bullets, well, no change from how they rolled out in round one. Sobe, Drumick and Patterson on the perimeter. Robert Franks was really impressive on debut. 19 points, 11 rebounds. And Tyrell Harrison on the interior, coming off a double-digit rebounding game. Lights about to be turned back on. Always great in the jungle. Fans getting more than just the game for their money's worth. Another full house. NBL 22, final game of round two. Great to have you, Kaupati, wherever you might be watching this third game of our triple header on this Sunday afternoon. You're about to watch arguably the best dynamic duo in the competition, Bryce Cotton and Vic Law. We've got the biggest and the best imports ever in this game, actually. Chuan Ching Lu, 2 metres 26. He's the biggest ever and the best ever. Bryce Cotton, three-time MVP. Let's get it on in the jungle from the tip. And here is Nathan Sobey. Talked about him in the intro, the junkyard dog. He can change a lot of things if he gets hot. Crowd roaring. Nice spin move early. And Drewick's going to have a big impact as well if he can get hot. Well, he needs to. Didn't score in the opening round, but the defensive miscommunication for the Wildcats. A couple of players looked like they were in a 2-3 zone. Then they tried to figure it out. It was too late. Good awareness and recognition from Drewick to end up getting a wide open layup. But Scott Morrison will not be happy with that. We never often see that to start a game, especially from the Wildcats. Just a really poor defensive breakdown. Early foul on Lamar Patterson, who's... Had a bit of pressure put on him to perform. Coming off a horror season. Half of that horror season with New Zealand. Back in the bullet singlet. As Cotton takes it to the glass. Doesn't finish. Harrison with the rebound. Sobey again. Even the last half of the season with Brisbane. Or Lamar Patterson didn't go to plan. But early stages now. And that's a nice dish to Sobey. Off the glass. Beautiful execution from the Bullets. The back screen for Sobey and Patterson put it right on the spot. Dish to Nadjul into the corner. Travis likes that corner. And that rims out. Cotton, little step aside three. Patterson the rebound. Frank sends it up. Drimmick. Harrison. Patterson to get a side All right now. All net. Well, that'll feel good for Lamar Patterson. Shake off those, those missed free throws in crunch time in Tasmania. He's had a, a lot of time to move on from that and knocks down one from long range early. And a 7 0 start. And they might get a stop here. They do. Harrison pulls it down. Confident start by the away team. Haven't seen the bullets for a while, not since their first game overtime loss screen was illegally set. And here is that play from Patterson, late in the shot clock, dribble handoff from Tyrell Harrison. And he just got the space he needed to let that off. Yeah, Brisbane's only game, the overtime loss to the Jack Jumpers, 74-83. Now scored quite a lot late in that game, so he ejected from that game. Travis feeds it in. Back out. Okay, too long. You heard the referees tell him to get out. Nick Law, and they're going to make a big presence of him early. He's going to feel he has that mismatch against Anthony Drimmick. Trying to post him up, but he was in there a long time. They get the turnover. It's a really good start from Brisbane. Back to Patterson. Drimmick into the paint. Hooks it in. That was beautiful to watch. Nice little start from Drimmick. A couple of buckets early, had a rough one in their opening game. Zero points, 0 of 4 from the field. So he's feeling good early in this one. Cotton, Maggio, Travis. They're still standing, the Perth crowd. Wait till a bucket and then they'll sit. 
It's the longest they've stood here for quite a while. They get a chance to sit now. How good has Majuk Majuk looked since coming back from that injury? It's just so good to see him out there, and he's just made such an impact already on this Wildcats unit. Getting on the offensive glass, we know what he does defensively on on balls, but cleaning up the mess, scoring when he has to, especially with Matt Hodgson out, his impact is going to be heavily needed. Going to stay out of foul trouble to do what he's been doing. It's been great. A couple of bizarre games this round where teams that have had early leads have ended up losing games. Take this kind of lead and this kind of start of your Brisbane on the road. Spin move from Franks off the glass, rattles it down. Nice from Franks. Caught it in a bit of an awkward spot there midway through the lane and just took his time, got his feet right. Found some space and laid it in. Magic to Bryce. Foul will go to the line. We highlighted that matchup off the top, Dwayne. When the Wildcats get their matchup sorted, they've got Zunik guarding Nathan Sobey. But on the flip side, the Bullets want Sobey to chase Cotton around those screens. He's done it for years. Go back to Adelaide. Joey Wright would always put Nathan Sobey on Bryce Cotton. Last couple of years as well. He's got the... The quickness, I mean, no one can ever shut Bryce Cotton down, but Cotton, Sobey has the quickness to stay with him. For the most part, Cotton shook loose right there. And you heard James Duncan on the top talking to Damo, up. basically just saying that. Like, you can't shut Bryce Cotton down. You've just got to make every shot as tough as possible. Try and tire him out so that when he gets to the fourth quarter, maybe he comes up a little short on a couple. Patterson, hands it to Franks again. Back to Patterson. Lamar given some room to move. Doesn't get the lucky roll. And. Cut. Wildcats ball. Franks doesn't quite agree with the call, but they really do. He didn't do a whole lot wrong. It looked like Robert Franks. If anything, I thought the foul might have been on Tyrell Harrison. He is confused. He's just not sure what happened there, but he's going to have to sit down. A bit early to use your challenge. It is. And <laughs> you said it the other day, Liam, about talking to coaches about how they use their challenges. And it's all about in terms of what points are we going to lose or gain from this potential challenge. It's definitely too early. And it's only his first foul. So not too much to look at there. Okay, coaches who do win their challenge, retain their challenges. Vic Law shows us what he's got in his bag of tricks against his old team, the Brisbane Bullets, for the first time. He's looked good to start the season, hasn't he? Drimmick doing his best he can to stay with him. But Law just such a dynamic offensive skill set. Outside, inside, ability to pull on the floor, get into the lane. He's averaging 25 points per game after the opening couple. Chan Ching Lu, tallest player ever to play in the NBL. Two minutes 26, helping Sobi to the bucket. Nice reply. This is exactly the kind of fast start James Duncan and the Bullets would have been after. Come into the jungle, got to get off to a good fast start. Travis hands it up and the reverse. Delightful from Law. Well, oh, tough finish, big Law. Looked like a lot of contact in that one. Good ball movement, good player movement. Dick Law good enough to finish. The catch and shoot from the corner. Air ball. It's jammed into the side. Travers. Has some room to move. Let's show us what he's got. And draws the foul. Well, it's, it's called a goal tank. Okay. Yeah, so uh, someone. Whether it was Big Lou. Or maybe someone else who slapped the backboard. Can't have any impact on. On that, once the ball's gone up, those points will count. And in comes Ollie Hayes Brown, development player who, without Matt Hodgson, is going to see some consistent minutes. He was excellent last week, had six points, seven rebounds, and just picked up exactly where Majuk left off in terms of crushing the glass hard. Back to Kadee, who's on the floor now. Dang, dang. And halfway down. Travis stolen from Sobey. Bryce, will he pull up here? A little shake and bake work. Hands it to Vic Law. Travis, just outside the arc. 
grab from Tanner Krebs for that rebound, long range rebound, Sobey. Great start to this contest, and it has been a contest right from the tip. Well, it's tough there, moving screen on Big Lou. And what we saw in the preseason, we didn't see much of him in the first game, but he was an excellent screener. You see here, just gets out with the right leg, bit of a hip, and cleans up Kevin Y. And it's tough for him, no doubt, because where he's hitting with the hip is a lot of people's shoulders. <laughs> That's just yeah. how big he is. But when he does, when he does stand still, he is just a huge unit. And that's what Bullets want to try and use out of him. They've got to protect him down this end in certain scenarios. Top from the top. There is Big Lou. And he's motoring down the floor, and so be foul. He's moving a lot better, Big Lou. In this game than he did when he only played four minutes in their opening game. It was a little light on from... Shan Ching Lu, no points, one rebound, four minutes of court time. Yeah, didn't have much of an impact, and James Duncan decided to, to put him on ice from that point on. But some early run here, picked up that, that foul. But yeah, you're right, he's getting up and down, setting some screens, getting his teammates open. Ding, ding. Sobe gets it back. Shot clock didn't reset. Oh, they're going to reset it. Here we go. Todd Blanchfield. Injured early. Haven't seen him so far. It'll be interesting to watch how he adapts to this new structure that Scott Morrison wants to play with. Where he came into the Wildcats last year in their flex offense, it just situated him perfectly. It was exactly what he needed to take his game to another level alongside Bryce Cotton. The way he comes off all that action, Looking forward to seeing how it plays out in this. Great to see him back out there, though. He's a, bit, a little bit ahead of schedule. Didn't expect to see him back out on the floor quite this early, but the rehab's done, as you say, 15 points per game last season. Had a really big impact. And there is Oliver Hayes-Brown. The big O. The big hyphen, whatever you want to call him. He has been superb. Standing on Rangers NBL 1. Rebound machine. And here he is again in the big time after a fantastic preseason blitz. Turned over. Poor usage there. And that mullet, whatever you'd like to call that. Mudguard at the back. And it's looking beautiful as well for this one. Sunday night NBL around the world. And quite a few in China watching given Chan Ching Lu is in action in this one. Still on the floor. Blanchfield is testing himself out. And the jam from the big O, Oliver Hayes Brown. Well, I love that they set up that play. They were trying to get Todd Blanchfield to look for three at the top, but well defended by the Bullets. And I love that he just put the ball on the floor and attacked. And there's Hayes Brown. Gets up quick, quick and strong. Sobey tries to instant reply. Blanchfield, Blanchfield doing it at both ends. And he looks fine. Wagstaff, just uh, he's been doing that on this floor for eternity. Nice response here from the Wildcats midway through the, the first term. They were starting to fall behind, but eight zip run to Perth. They're in the lead. Cotton, will he take it to the hole here? Sobey says, come on, take me on. And he kicks it out to Blanchfield. All right. So unselfish from Bryce Cotton. Had a layup. Kind of did enough to... Catch Nathan Sobey off guard and had a layup. But this is what I was talking about. Put the ball on the floor. Good patience not to force anything up. Drew Big Lou across. Holly Hayes Brown got up right here. Bryce Conn's got a layup. But he wants to get Todd Blanchfield an early look. They designed the play before to try and get him a three. That's going to feel good for Todd Blanchfield and the Red Army love it. It's all about talking down there. The last time was way better. I could hear you call ice, right? Like Mike said, if we get in trouble or things, things break down, don't be afraid to switch. Yeah, we have, we have principles to counter whatever we're doing. Let's go pick, pick. You're the first screener. You're the second screener, okay? So pick, pick the first time, okay? Second time, pick, pick again. Third time, if we get to it, put Jesse over here. Todd, you slip the, the again screen and get Jesse. You can always attack, though. Third one, so pick, 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 pick again. 
Slip it. Let's go. Scott Morrison, former Boston Celtics assistant coach for the past four seasons. He's head coach at Lakehead University in Canada. He's a Canadian replacing Trevor Gleason. Tough guy to research because when you Google the name Scott Morrison, <laughs> oh. especially when you add things like, you know, lockdown, <laughs> how to stop the lockdown on cotton. Damien Martin downstairs, six time NBL champ. Welcome to you, Damo. Uh, sat in on the Brisbane Bullets time out there. Obviously, they weren't happy with the last few possessions defensively. And then on the other end of the basketball court, just too many turnovers. The start of the game, they were cool, calm and collected. Their spacing, their timing was perfect. But four turnovers now, I believe, and that is really hurting the Bullets, and they address that. Spot on. Got to make them pay for the last one again. Wagstaff gets them in the air. Finger roll didn't work. Hayes Brown was under the bucket, beaten for it by Deng Deng. Kadee. Franks. Kevin White. Wagstar from way outside by Shellen Pease for Jesse. Well, he's been playing good. Jesse Wagstar coming in and. What I love about so far this season, he's putting the ball on the floor, he's attacking the hoop, he's getting to the rim. I don't know what happened in the offseason, but he's moving extremely well. Six-time NBL championship winner looking for an all-time record seventh. Nearly the turnover again, in fact, slapped on the arm on the way through. It's not a foul, it's... Okay. I think it's out so of bounds. fingernail on it and took it out. Speaking of the great Jesse Wagstaff, Damien Martin, long-time partner downstairs. What do you make of his new form? Oh, he's been sensational for the club, but it's funny that you mentioned him. He's having another great game. And don't get me wrong, he's put a lot of points on the board at this arena. But I've got a feeling he has Todd Blanchfield to credit with it. When Todd got announced, when he got subbed in, the crowd went crazy. I think Jesse mistook it for them going because he was subbing at the same time. <laughs> and he's full of confidence and loving it. Yeah, the crowd love. He's been here long, that long. I think they've had three changes of carpet at the venue since he first started. He has been an icon of this club, a one-club player. Kadeem, back out. Bullets need a hero in a hurry here, by the way. Started well, led early. Wildcats have dominated the last seven minutes. It's a 16-zip run to Perth. Blanchfield. Madjul to back himself in. And he backs himself in. But doesn't finish. Franks. There's still some momentum back. The Bullets. Handy two. They needed that. Brisbane come up dry possession after possession late in this first quarter. So much needed bucket there from Robert Franks. Well, it should get it back. A little bit of a shot clock, game clock differential. Vic Law. Hasn't had to do a lot just yet. Now gets his moment. Can't nail it. Late chance here for the Bullets to add. Sneak a little closer. Shot clock winding down and dropped. Tough bucket on the buzzer, but some momentum back the Bullets way. Awesome from Franks. Robert Franks. Seven NBA games with Orlando Magic. Won every one of the seven as well. He's got a deep bag of tricks, and he shows us one there. 22 plays 17, quarter time, Sun and Night, NBL from the jungle.
Quarter time in the jungle. Another big crowd. Hoping to see their Perth Wildcats remain undefeated to make it three from three. Started the season brilliantly. 12-point win over the 36ers. 23-point win over Cairns. And they do start the season with five games in a row. Tonight's winner of the $50 Kmart gift card is Mary Ann Keefe. Congratulations to you, Mary Ann. And a little bit of baby racing quarter time. And content with that. A couple of yards, that was good enough. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love, love that. that. Families at the games. It's been on social media, it's great, but unfortunately that kid's probably not winning. It was just st stuck in the mud, but... <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Second quarter in the jungle. Water started well. Wildcats finished the quarter well. Vic Law dancing his way. Blanchfield. How hot has he begun? Todd Blanchfield. Hasn't missed a beat. Todd Blanchfield, eight quick points off the bench. And he just looks terrific. First game back from that knee injury. They won their first two games this season without him. Still got Michael Frazier. They're big guns to come as well. Still out injured. Sobey going to have to play a big role. Harrison the rebound. Sobey gets it back. Lamar steps inside. Draws one. Good, strong, quick move from Patterson in the block. Didn't waste time. As soon as he got it in there, started to attack that middle area. And James Duncan's gone back to his starting group to begin this second quarter. Things really dried up for them offensively when they started to ring the rotations. They, were, they led 11 to 2, and it was a 20 to 2 run from there for Perth. 16 zip as a part of that. Zero points off the bench for Brisbane in that first term. And that all started when Robert Frank sat down after four minutes, and it was only his first foul, and then everything really trying to dry it up. And talk about a man who. His opening game had 19 points, 11 rebounds. Looks super exciting, and he's going to be a huge part of the Bullets going forward. Oh, wow. Again, heat check from Top Blanchfield. Why not let him fly, given the form he's been in in his return game? Drimmick. Patterson. Almost, it is turned over. Vic Law, Sobe ahead of him. And takes on Sobe and puts him to the deck. Sobe superb. That is an excellent read from Nathan Sobe. You don't reckon he saw a couple of those in training last year? <laughs> uh, read that perfectly. Knew exactly a bit of around the world from Vic Law. Nathan Sobe just moving his feet at the right time. Stood still right at the end. Great read, good take. And Todd Blanchfield, the way he started here, and you mentioned Michael Frazier being out. All reports and what we've seen from him and his resume coming in, when they're at full strength, we might even see a top Blanchfield and potentially kind of a role like Clint Steiner. They come in, check how hot he is. He can do a lot more, put the ball on the floor, but someone at some point is going to have to be that real sixth man coming off and being a spark. They're going to have a few choices at full strength. Oh, they're going to be deep when they get everyone back, no doubt. They're going to have a, a few really high-level guys coming off the bench. Michael Frazier coming in with... Great resume, as the guy said, 17 NBA games with the Rockets. Signed with the Lakers at one stage, but was waived. Hopefully he's not far away. Madjul. Rims out. Harrison. Little bit of momentum back the Bullets' way. Patterson. Harrison. Off the glass nicely. Good find from Patterson underneath. You can hear James Duncan calling out on the sideline. Move it, move the ball. It got a bit sticky for Brisbane in their opening game. Just not quite enough ball movement. Would have been a focus for them coming in today. We look best when everybody gets a touch. A little bit of a push. He tried, it's been some pushing this round. Bit you guys have, bit have you seen... Well, there was a little bit of a stoush in the throwdown earlier today, a little bit yesterday. Just a little bit of an extracurricular weekend, hasn't it? Just a bit of extra. A bit of mayonnaise going around, but yeah, Anthony Drimmick just unhappy with himself probably for wrapping up Todd Blanchfield. But Scott Morrison working the sideline, working the refs hard every game so far. 
in NBL 22. Cool. Had to hand it up. And again, too long. Good defensive possession there for the Bullets. Credit to Tanner Krebs there. That's the, one of the toughest situations in the league. There you see, well, there you see Mike Kelly behind him. <laughs> is Michael Frazier the second, their third import, who is sitting out with the cork thigh. But Tanner Krebs, the footwork to stay in front of Bryce Cotton on that possession was elite. Yeah, talked about his resume, shot 11 three-pointers in a 37-point game for Florida. Can fill it up, it's got to be a stacked roster when he's fit. And we all can't wait for that. They're always the team to beat the Wildcats, but Again, they're showing they might be again this season. And speaking of players that have come out of nowhere, had a couple of guys who have played pre-season. Oliver Hayes Brown, Kyle Zunick, they just played so well you can't ignore it. Well, those guys have been really impressive. Kyle Zunick for me in particular. You know, signed as a DP, was really impressive in his time at Winthrop. So it was a good signing to get him as a development player. Definitely a guy who could sign a fully contracted position this year, but. That, he has really held it down in the absence of Mitch Norton over their first couple of games. Lamar Patterson biding his time, gets a little screen. Takes on Hayes Brown, high off the glass, doesn't go. Franks pulls it back out and puts it back in. Well, he's a workhorse, Robert Franks, and just such a good signing. Without Vic Law coming back to the Bullets to get a man. Robert Franks' quality is such a good get for the program. A little bit of white lightning. Kevin White gets a little moment in the sun. In the last couple of years, Kevin White has completely ruined everybody's scout. Good pass from Nathan Sobey. Robert Franks didn't want to get any sort of jiggy with that one. But Kevin White has turned himself into someone that every team would go under. Let's shoot. If he hits a couple of threes and beats you, you'd be okay with that. You just can't do that anymore. He had a career-high 31 threes last season. And remember the grand final series. He was enormous. Average double figures. That man is shooting the ball with confidence and has really transformed himself. Two Canadian coaches in this one, which is a rarity. Let's have a listen to James Duncan. Hey, look. Look for a kick ahead, all right? And then we can get into our picks. But we can also cross. They're having problems with that, all right? So kick your heads if you if you have it there, and then we can get into our picks with the cross. And if we don't have anything from that, then just move it to the back end of it, and then we're good. All right? Defensively, we got to stay on the glass. We got to stay on the glass. we contesting. You got anything for me? What you got? Take a point. Way to come back, all right? Like, all right. Now we're coming out, but we're going to be going our way back. Keep fighting. Keep getting good. Right. So, uh, KD. We gotta get back and rebound. All right, let's go. Pretty cool there from James Duncan midway through that timeout, just giving some ownership to the players. You got anything from me? A couple of chip ins, and then he regains control of the timeout. And you can hear him there emphasizing the ball movement, looking for kick aheads, as in pass it up the floor along the sideline in offensive transition. And then he says, if nothing early, Get some ball movement. We'll get to something later in the shot clock. So a real focus to get the ball through hands. Make the Wildcats play deep. Cotton. White. Damien Martin downstairs. Yeah, I listened in on the Perth Wildcats time out there. And I know that head coach Scott Morris and his mum gave him a call during the week and said congrats on the two wins. But please watch your language while you're on TV. I can report to his mum. Mum, you'll be glad that the camera crew didn't cover that one. He was not too happy with the boys' defence, and particularly in the switches. Uh, but I think uh, he'll, he'll mind his language when the camera is on next time. It's been a little fruity from the coaches this season. It's Jesse Wagstaff goes alone but the thing about the season i've got to say is the intensity has been unbelievable the players the coaches they are on edge as if every minute of every game counts the nba can take a month to get going yep before everybody oh, cares to this a league. month or two yeah often say not until after the all-star break does yep. it start to ramp up that's the beauty of the nbl especially back this season back to the 28 games every game really matters in a season like that and there's a playoff-like intensity, game in, game out. Yeah, you sense that the coaches 
And we creep in our own edge and the players, the push and shove, That's the crowd's been involved. That's unsportsmanlike. Here's Scott Morrison there, and he might have a case. They're probably going to have a look at him. Just because I mean, Bryce Cotton was, and we talk about a play on the ball. Good good hands from Bryce Cotton. Luke Travis is there to help you see there. Deng Deng just grabbing a hold of Bryce Cotton's left arm. We'll see it better from this one here. Good hands from Bryce Cotton to get the ball loose. And right there, Deng Deng just doing enough to stop Bryce Cotton going towards the ball. And these are tough because they're going to look for an upgrade. Problem was, didn't even have to do it. The ball was heading out of bounds. You know, the, you know the refs are hot on this one. In well, There's definitely no legitimate play on the mm. ball. Did he get a little bit of his jersey as he went past him? Maybe a tiny bit. Not a lot of contact, to be honest. Cotton sold it, but by the letter of the law, that 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 is an unsportsmanlike foul. Well, the only the smallest bit of contact there was was just out of frustration with the turnover and just immediately trying to slow down Bryce Cotton. So, as you said, Liam, would not be surprised. But then again, wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't, and it's not. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so normal foul. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of contact, but definitely no play on the ball. White. Bryce Cotton. A little off early. Kadeek. Gets it back. Speaking of guys that keep on keeping on, he's one of those. Jason Kadeek rarely misses, always. Plays his role and can he deliver on cue <laughs> just as we're wrapping him up as if he read the script. Beautifully <laughs> done, Duano, and that'll feel good for Jace. 0 for 4 from long range in their opening night loss. He's off the mark. He puts the bullets in front. Travis had to give it back. Why? It's Jesse Wagstaff. Bryce Cotton dances to his spot for two and the jam, the lid on it from Travis. Just hangs around Luke Travis. We spoke about the 14 rebounds, career high against Cairns. But all those little things in the corners, trying to put the ball on the floor, trying to be aggressive, and that's probably going to be an offensive foul. Jason Kadi doesn't like it. There's another veteran move from Kevin White. Bryce Cotton just nodding his head to Luke Travis, saying, thanks for cleaning that one up for me, young fella. That's a bit a lot of verbal from any of the bullets toward Vic Law. Gonna rattle that cage. Playing against his old team for the first time. He's been starring in his first two games for the Wildcats. 37 points against the 36 is his first game for Perth. Off 29 shots. He was lights out in that one. Was six of 13 from long range coming in to this one. Missed his first attempt. Law gives it back to Cotton. Wagstaff. Law wants it. See if he turns on Sobey here to the corner. Comes out from the hand of White. Nearly got a friendly roll, and Sobey hits the deck again. And Vic Law argues his case. We saw at the top of the broadcast, just all those little social media banter. There's a lot of love still between those guys off the court, and all of that was some good fun, but you know there's a little bit extra when you step onto the floor because Bullets wanted him back. Yep. That would have been big for the Bullets to retain a man who was playing at an all-NBL caliber level before getting injured. So no doubt you step on the floor. You don't want him to get comfortable in a red uniform. You want to show him what he's missing out in a Brisbane Bullets jersey. Kadeet. Franks. And the putback, ding, ding. You can't knock back. If the best sporting franchise in Australia says, hey, would you like to play for us? You can't knock that back, can you? If, if ACDC ring and say, hey, we need a guitarist, you can't say, hey, I'm playing for Chisel. You're just going to say, hey, I'm going I'm to leave, Jimmy. I'm sorry. No, but no loyalty. Do I know? Mick Jagger's calling my name. They are the best sporting franchise in Australia. No doubt about it. Absolutely is Lamar Patterson calling his Jets on the bench. Two fouls. Hasn't had a massive impact thus far. They'll need much more from him in the second half. But you're right, Vic Law. I mean, th those guys loved playing with him last season. He's a great teammate, high-level player. We know that. But a really great teammate, a great guy. So, yeah, they chimed in. But that was really just because they wanted him back.
you know, and they were surprised that he's went in a different direction. But they've got a solid replacement in Robert Franks, and that's a fun matchup here. Law's got four points. Franks has 12. High quality contest at the moment. Patterson having a sit down. There's a man we're talking about, Robert Franks, on cue again. Damien Martin downstairs. Oh, I've just got to chime in very quickly. Don't worry about Cold Chisel and Akadaka. For the nine years Greg Lyon played for the Perth Wildcats, he blasted Daryl Braithwaite horses after every win. So we know. We, well, let's just hope that he's moved to Perth and he doesn't mind a little bit of it himself. <laughs> Bryce from outside, and that rattles out. Great to have six-time NBL champ, six-time best defensive player, Damien Martin, downstairs with us. And that is beautiful to watch as well. This is a show to behold, our final game of round two. Top Lansfield is having a great comeback game. White pushes. Robert Franks. Besides the first three ball that Blanchfield hit and the Bryce Cotton set him up for, and that's what I loved about the play from Bryce Cotton. He had a layup, but just wanted to see, give Todd Blanchfield an early touch. Does he feel good? Knocks one down. The rest have been pretty heavily contested. And he's just stepped into it, knocked it down, and three of three from outside. He'll be feeling super happy to be back. Fantastic to have crowds back. At sporting events around Australia, including the jungle, which has got one of the most vocal, intimidating crowds in Australia. Here's Scott Morrison. Where's the ball here? Baseline? Okay, good baseline defense. All right. You got Frank On even Harrison. Okay. You guard Franks. Okay. You guard the next biggest guy. Blitz the next one. Next pick and roll. Next pick and roll. Blitz. Yes, just pick. Okay, you guys match up from there. Hey, down here. Fist. Bryce here. LT. Vic and Bryce right here. Okay. That's great access we get. Crawl into the timeouts. Listen to the head coaches. Must be a bit of a transition for new coaches into the league when that doesn't happen elsewhere. Start to realize, oh, geez, that... Sanctum that is my huddle might be open for everyone to hear. And when you hear him talk about blitz, he's saying we're going to double team. So next time, next pick and roll, they're going to look to double team the ball, try to force a turnover. It is funny to think that his mum said I was watching the coverage overseas in Canada and your language got a bit fruity for my liking. Nathan Sobey does what Nathan Sobey does. A little bit of carve past them and Level up the scores at 37 each. Bryce. Oh. Cadeen knew exactly what he was going to do. Read his mind. And gets it back. Sobey from the logo. Yeah, baby. Well, they lost Nathan Sobey in defensive transition, the Wildcats, and a really good find from Cadeen. Just made sure the ball landed in the open man's hand. Easy open look for Sobey. Wagstar foul on his way. Bullets back in front by three. One minute 14 to half time. That's what you're talking about, Liam. The defensive transition from the Wildcats. They were running back to the lane. No one knew where Nathan Sobey was. You've got to locate him because he's a guy that can start feeling good quickly. Get the scoreboard ticking over. And the play before, he hadn't. Majuk Majuk had switched out to him. Majuk can move his feet pretty well for a big guy, but you still have to everybody load up behind him. Nathan Sobey is so tough to stop when he is at full speed going downhill. He made a quick in and out, got straight past Majuk, and the lane opened up. Easy layup. Two shots. Thanks, us family. The 24 will be retired at some stage. What's the ruling as to how long after retirement? Well, geez, Sean Reddick is still waiting. Okay. Damien Martin's number needs to go up. Yep. Both those numbers Into waiting. Into the rafters, but no doubt 24 will make its way up there. Sooner or later. Maybe they're just waiting to do all three together. Just something else. Well, that, that means Damien Martin might have to wait another three seasons. <laughs> Jesse's getting younger. Here's the Benjamin Button of the NBL. One minute left in the half. Kadeem. Gets it back, gets a screen. Doesn't get it to go off the glass. And here is Jesse Wagstaff. The evergreen we've been talking about. Cotton hands it back to him. He can't drop it on cue. 
So a little two for one on offer here for the Bullets with Kadi going early. And why wouldn't you if you've got the freedom to do it and the confidence to put it in? Perfect. As you say, Dwayne, awareness of the, the time and score. Sobi finding Kadi in transition. They're going to get another bite at the apple. Travers. Zunik. With the full 360 and came out. So the last play of the half for the Bullets, who will take a lead in at half time. Is it Sobi time? Looks like he's going to take the responsibility, take them on, steps inside, a little hesitation, and on the fourth attempt, no putback. Nathan Sobi not happy. He's got to be happy overall. You said to the Brisbane Bullets before the game, hey, we'll give you a 43 to 39 lead at half time. I reckon they would have taken it. I don't think he's A bit of chat, chit chit chat on the way out for the Bullets, but really good response in that second quarter. 26 to 17, Brisbane's way as they edge forward a four point margin into the sheds. You're right, you take that in the jungle. Good start. For Brisbane, good response after falling down near double digits. They're back in the lead. Damien Martin downstairs. Yeah, I'm here with Todd Blanchard. 11 points, your first game back after serious injury. How does it feel out there? Yeah, it feels good. It just feels good to be back on the court. You know, it's uh, it's one thing to do it in practice, but to be on the court again, it uh, feels good. You know, it's obviously giving up 43 in the first half. It's uh, probably a little over our target, but, you know, it's feeling good so far. And down four points. What do you think Scott's message will be to the boys? I mean, we've got a rebound. I think, you know, you spoke about the start of the week. We're probably going to be a little smaller than them. You know, I think they've probably exported those mismatches right now, and probably rebounding is the, uh, the difference. Thanks, all, mate. Best luck in the second half. Four-point game here at REC Arena. It's been a game of runs. Let's see what the next 20 minutes has in store. Coming up next, the second half.
Hungry Jack's halftime highlights. And there have been plenty of them from both teams. Seesawing contest. Bullets had seven points on the board before the Wildcats blink. Perth led by five at quarter time, got their mojo back. Uh, the Bullets owned the second quarter. Nine point turnaround in the second quarter. They lead by four points at half time. And the final game of NBL 22 round two might be the best of the lot the way it's transpiring right now. Well, it's been a seesawing affair, hasn't it? And it was all about the Bullets starters early on. They got the Brisbane out to a bit of a lead and then their bench had all kind of dried up for the Wildcats. You know, Perth starter has more than four points. 25 bench points for the Wildcats. Todd Blanchfield, an enormous element of that. And Sobey coming up strong, one of the leading scorers for the Bullets. Robert Franks has been excellent with 14. We mentioned Blanchfield, wax up. Those two coming off the bench, combining for 20 points. And one man whose name is not up there is Vic Law. He was the other one, Bryce Cotton. Those two superstars just finding a little bit difficult to find space and, and tick the scoreboard over but pretty good shooting percentages both teams and a really solid rebounding advantage to the bullets getting some offensive rebounds some extra possessions and they've got a little lead been fun pete well it has and this is what you wanted to see and it's always tough when perth go on a run at home how do you respond james duncan will be thrilled with the way the bullets came back out of that quarter time break a couple of timeouts the way they responded they're in a good spot we're only 20 minutes done. That's the hardest job is to do it for another half. <laughs> yeah, big half still to come. Damien Martin is downstairs. How have you seen it from your angle, Damo? Yeah, it's been a game of runs. When the teams take care of the ball, they seem to be able to put points on the board. But when they start throwing turnovers like Brisbane did late in that first quarter, Perth got a hold of it, went on a run. Credit to Brisbane. Patterson in particular. Frank, he's everywhere. His energy has been amazing. It just seems to pop up where the ball is and has been fantastic so far. Yeah, what's impressed you most about Robert Frank's demo? 14 points. He's the game-leading scorer. He's just so involved in the game. Even at timeouts, he's one of the first people to speak up about a breakdown or what they can do better. So he's just everywhere, whether it's on the court, in timeouts. He's a great athlete. He is a big build, and he can finish with either hand around the ring. So he's been Brisbane's best so far. We mentioned Vic Law only the four points, but Bryce Cotton, two points only from the free throw line. He's 0 of 6. You've got to give a lot of credit to Brisbane. We know Bryce Cotton can turn things around, but what have you seen from the Bullets on the defensive end that has made Bryce's first 20 minutes a tough one? I've always considered Bryce the best scorer we've seen in this league to a capacity, but he's so unselfish. He's an unselfish scorer. But what he's doing, trying to get Blanchfield involved, trying to get other guys involved, is great. It's unselfish. But there comes a point where he's got to put the ball under his arm and say, clear out. I need to go and make plays. Because when he's kicking the ball away, you should see Brisbane. They are denying him it back. They're top blocking it. They're double teaming. They're getting after him in on balls. So if I was Bryce, I'd ask for some space, get into that one-on-one -on -one game, and then see what happens. We'll be coming to you right throughout the second half. Uh, Damo, grab yourself some sustenance. Could be a huge second half to come in front of a full house in the jungle. We'll talk about what's happening in the game, but it's a win-loss business, isn't it? If mm -hmm. Brisbane can get away from this with a victory, that would be huge for them. Incredible. What a great way to bounce back from that opening night mm -hmm. loss. Always just so good to be able to win on the road anywhere yeah. in the NBL, let alone in the jungle. And they play in Perth again their next yes. game. So to get off, if they can escape with a win in this one... That will be massive and give them a launching pad for their next matchup next round. Deep roster when Blanchfield can do this in this game. We know he's got the quality, yes, but he's been out, hasn't played at all. Well, we have, and the question mark was, as we mentioned in the broadcast, and from last year, it's not as the same structure. How is he going to play? This is the play here that got him going. They ran a play for him before that, and he made a good read to a pass to Hayes Brown Dunk. But after that, Tom Blanchfield just had his way, shooting the ball confidently. He would love being back out there playing with a new couple of pieces. We talk about Vic Law, he's going to get a lot of attention. Bryce Cotton as well. When you talk about Michael Frazier coming in, all these pieces, the depth is really what's going to make Perth Wildcats tough to beat. There you see his shot chart, thanks to SodaStream. On the green dots around the three-point line, he's three of three, expecting to get a few more up. And when he does check into the game, Brisbane Bullets have to know where he is. They're going to run something for him. Right now, he's hitting them. He's been terrific, but make no mistake, it's all about Bryce Cotton and Vic Law. I mean, if the if the Bullets can... They only had six points combined yeah. in that first half. They've been combining for 49 a game over their first couple. If the Bullets can keep the clamps on those two, they'll come away with a win. A couple of big guns in this. Talk about Vic Law. We've also got first and third in MVP voting. Sobey and Cotton. Plenty still to come. Stick around. Tight game at halftime. Bullets away from home by four.
Four-point lead to the Bullets in the jungle second half, not far from getting underway. He was the best defensive player in the competition for the best part of a decade, and he wouldn't let Scott Morrison get past him without having a little chat to him and asking him what he thought of the first half. Uh, what did he give you, Damo? Look, I can say there's been two people who were not happy with me. One was Scott Morrison in the Wildcats. He was not happy that Brisbane are playing with more aggression, getting after it. And in particular, Franks, we talked about him at halftime. He has been everywhere. And Morrison made a clear cut to his players. You better get after him. The other person who's not happy with me right now is my mum and Greg Hyde. They've told me to tuck my shirt in. You probably barely noticed me now, guys, but I'm ready for another 20 minutes. Scott's ready to go as well. <laughs> we just got this pan back. Yeah, the pan back yeah. is there. We, we ate, everything's in order, Damo. Hey, when, you, when you're a six-time as you are and be your champion, you can kind of roll with what you want to roll with. I mean, he owns the house. Oh, he does. Yeah. Not, when it's, not when it's just around the corner from Christmas, boys. I'm expecting some presents to be sent out west. <laughs> Mum, I love you. I've done my hair. I've tucked the shirt in. Enjoy the coverage. <laughs> well, Mitch Norton, we haven't really talked about the fact that they've still got, well, we talked about Michael Frazier, but Matthew Hodgson as well, out. Yeah, just... Played the opening minute of their opening game. Matt Hodgson, Majuk Majuk's just been so good in in his place. And uh, yeah, Mitch Norton, two-time championship winning point guard, due back around the new year. It was really just it was the heart and soul of yes. the Wildcats. You know Bryce Cotton, he's greatness. There's no doubt about that. But this man. Bryce Cotton went down last Harrison's year. Mitch got two, yeah. Sobey's got one. Yeah. We reviewed that play in the first Can we let them know? Huh? Can we let there you go, they're just talking about them. some different Kyle fouls that were reviewed. But <laughs> Mitch Norton played on one leg and battled through some severe pain. This is what we want. Nice review at halftime. They've taken a foul from Harrison and given it to Nathan Sobey. Well, Harrison will be stoked. Nathan Sobey, not so much. <laughs> Harrison had three, Sobey had none. Oh, wow, great hands from Travis. Picked Patterson's pocket. Love it. Alliteration from Liam Santa Maria. As Travis takes it to the hole and gets hammered. Just locked in defensively off in that opening position. There's his mum and dad, Luke Travis, enjoying proceedings. And... Off the steal, he then gets it back. Strong attack. Harrison, he had one foul taken off him. Well, he's added it right back to his foul column. So he's back on three. So he's on one. Luke Travis, if you're new to the NBL, one of those that we expect to be NBA bound at some stage. Well, he's found his way onto the ESPN Top 100 for next year's draft. Jonathan Gavoni, Mike Schmitz, the, the draft analysts, have put him on there at number 89. And uh, the challenge now is to work his way up those draft boards on their rankings, but also in the minds of the NBA execs. Yeah, such a good recent record of the NBL of providing young up-and-comers to the NBA as Madjuk finds his way clear. Good lane running. Oh, Madjuk, Madjuk just sprinting. Middle cylinder. Might have took a while to get his feet right in the end. I think he probably wanted to dunk it, but couldn't figure it out. Lamar, pull up two. Matt took the rebound. It was a beautiful pass from Travis, too. Didn't try to do anything special with it. Just a nice weighted pass, perfectly timed for the big fella. Big Law showing what the Bullets have lost. Wildcats back in front. Oh, Euro from Harrison. Couldn't finish. And loses. Oh, I've seen a lot of things that have shocked me this weekend in round two, but Terrell Harrison. The right to left Euro step into the floater. Early stages third. Bryce Cotton hasn't had to dominate just yet. Gets away from Sobic, gives Drimmick the task. Long Ranger, and another one that rims out. So his radar not quite on the superstar. That's one of the benefits for the Bullets of, of Drimmick having that Vic Law matchup. When they go to the Cotton Law pick and roll, Drimmick can switch on the Cotton and move his feet. Sobe, long range step back, three attempt. Oh, Harrison had to do a bit of extra work to get it in there. A little stat padding from Harrison, just a nice easy one, just let it roll off and tip it back in yourself. Cotton 
It's in front of Patterson. Gives it up, though, instead, and that'll do. You don't have to put them in yourself. Give it to Vic Law, Batman and Robin. It is a duo to behold. He's come out firing. Vic Law, a couple of early buckets after that quiet first half. Drimmick draws the foul on his way. Damo said it, didn't he? Bryce Cotton, he's a willing passer. And we've seen a lot in the first two games. Always looking for Vic Law. And we knows that whenever he's got the ball, Bryce Cotton, everybody's head's going to be looking. Anthony Drimmick just a second slow, worried about Bryce Cotton turning the corner. Right there, and passes on the money. Vic Law getting his feet behind the line, rising up. Has started this second half very well. James Duncan spoke about it pre-game, about guarding Cotton. You say, hey, we just want to contest, make every shot difficult. They've done a great job in that regard. 0 for 7 for Cotton, all over a hand. But the same thing applies to Vic Law. Maybe a tiny step of overhelp from Drimmick, but from there, that's a, that's a solid contest. You've got to be aware of his ability to drive past you, stay on the floor, carry a hand. Vic Law knocks it in. Madjuk, Zunik, Cotton, Law. Double team, hands to Travis, free in the corner. Good D from the Bullets. Harrison left free, screen for Sobey, steps into the paint, back to Harrison. Foul, didn't finish. Disappointed with himself. It was a great play. I heard James Duncan yelling the picks too as they come down. And the whole idea was to get Nathan Sobey off a bit of a flare screen, but clear out the other side. Had a bit of bit of stuff going on. And all the action before that let the other side have the defense be busy so that Nathan Sobey could turn the corner off Harrison, open things up. And the idea is really to look for that little drop-off pass because hopefully what Nathan Sobey can do is engage the big defender in Majuk Majuk. Harrison rolling and they get a play like that. So I don't make James Duncan very happy. They can call something on the fly. They can execute it, get where they want. And Harrison gets fouled. Two quick in. And you can see the disappointment on the face of Scott Morrison. Handed over another free throw. Did you watch Frank's doing this though? The little things that can become big things. Bullets back in front. Harrison a sit down. Chuan Ching Lu comes in for the bullets. He's in the rotation ahead of Jack Salt, clearly, at this point. The big Kiwi hasn't seen any action thus far. Tuning in for the first time tonight. Chinese star out on the floor. Tallest player ever to play in the NBL. Back out to the corner. And Lou nearly had it, lost the handle last second. He's quick to get down the floor. Cotton, likewise, behind the back, takes on Patterson, floater off the front, and there is Chuan Ching Lu doing what they want him to do, pull down the rebounds. Patterson draws the crowd, pull up two. Franks this time, with a little bit of help from Lou under the bucket. Creating some space for him, puts it back. Well, Franks probably saved Big Lou there because they wanted to go back to the same play and he was just in the wrong spot. Nathan Sobey was looking for that flare screen, wasn't there, but Robert Franks doing wonders on the offensive glass up to 16 points right now. And he's looking at every bit of the play that we saw in the preseason and more. Franks. Green. Patterson pleads his case. He didn't get there in time. Zero explanation, didn't get there in time. So Lamar's got three fouls now. Here's Frank's stat line, 16 points. Only missed three shots. Eight of 11 from the field. Five rebounds, three of them offensive boards. So having a really big impact. Matched up against the guy who he's replaced this year. Speaking of Vic Law, really well defended by Anthony Drimmick, that previous possession. Cotton. Well, sooner or later, you know they're going to start dropping. Shooters just keep shooting. What goes around comes around. Sooner or later, you know one of the greatest shooters in the history of the NBL 
It's got to heat up. Well, this is one of the toughest tasks right now because you've done a good job to make every shot pretty contested. That's what James Duncan wanted, but there's 15 minutes left in the game. It only takes Bryce Cotton one look to go down. To go oh, to break a game open, but that man is just waving to the bench after the last couple of baskets, and I'm not sure who he's waving to, but he's starting to enjoy himself out there. Certainly not his own bench if he's waving in that direction. Patterson. Sobey. Tried to hand it over. Travis read his mind. Behind the back of Patterson to Cotton. Rejected by Ding Ding. Awesome. Sobey. Can't finish what would have been a brilliant momentum changing play for the Bullets. Well, here's the defensive play in transition. Geez, that looked like it hit the board. That's trash. Off the board and then Ding Ding hits it. That bucket should have counted. And they kick it ahead in transition and a call on the Wildcats on the rebounding contest that Scott Morrison's not happy about. Did he get a warning there? It's all made very tough. Scott Morrison did hit the ball against the backboard, so I think they got away with one there. Well, they don't get the advantage of the replay. But we do. Cameron doing a great job there. Hope you're enjoying this as much as we're enjoying bringing it to you. It's tight in the jungle. And the reverse doesn't drop. Damien Martin downstairs. Yeah, that ball definitely touched the backboard. And all I know is I want to play poker against Tanner Krebs. His poker face after it was horrible. He started laughing. They got away with one there, but it all evens out. <laughs> 50 apiece, four minutes left in the third. We talked about how tough it is to win in the jungle. Jason Gaddee has played here 20 times for 18 losses. Mm. And he's never won a game here in the jungle with the Bullets. Yeah, it's an absolute fortress. They've had some heartbreaking losses in the jungle. Brisbane, Bryce Cotton has given it to him in last second situations. But James Duncan has brought Anthony Drimmick back in the, on the floor. Misses there. Ball will go to the Wildcats. But he didn't get much of a rest, Drimmick. He's got Krebs out there, Garden Cotton. And Drimmick. Tom Morrison calling a double here. Keep your eye on Todd Blanchfield. Said he wanted it for Todd. A lot of it might have been set up to get that man open. And, well, he hasn't been feeling too good from outside. Worst thing to do is send him to the free throw line and start to see get his eye in. Well, he's 0 for 10 from the field, Bryce Cotton, before this moment. I'm not sure he's ever been 0 for 10. Would he have ever been 0 for 10? Well, I think back to that. That game against the Sydney Kings years ago when he, he put Jerome Randall on skates. Huge finish to that game from Bryce Cotton. Had a really rough opening from the field. I'm not sure if it was quite 0 for 10, but, but mark this moment down. A chance to go to the free throw line, see a couple go down. He's 0 for 10 from the field, 0 for 5 from long range. Three shots. Chance here to just find a little bit of rhythm from the stripe and see that thing go through the hole. It's Cotton's family watching on. Gets himself three the hard way. We've seen the calm maybe before the Bryce Cotton storm. Liam Santa Maria said it could be a game-changing moment. One of the best shooters ever to come to Australia. Sobey steps it in. Tough floater on the run. Put back attempt from Franks. Doesn't work. And the foul. Ra Ching Lu reaches all the way down there to Kevin White. And commits... The foul, there he is, all 226 centimetres and 130 kilos of him. That's the two of you guys combined, just about. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, Santa Maria with me. I tell you, he's, his fellow countryman put on a show oh, yeah. earlier today in the throwdown. What a There's massive a reason performance. why he's getting bumped. It's okay. not because he's trying to get like run out of, out of lane. They're having a little look at the replay centre here for a potential upgrade. 
they've sent the officials have sent this up just to just to ask the question. Get a little look at it. At some point here, I don't know there's much to it. Kevin White grabbed the rebound. Okay, normal foul. Juan Ching Lu had a reach Two, for it. One. Picked up the personal. That's the key with unsportsmanlike fouls. They all they have the ability to go up and maybe upgrade it, but if there is one called, it gets reviewed as well. So it's not something that coaches have to worry about challenging, because I don't think you actually can challenge an unsportsmanlike foul, because it'll get looked at itself in terms of was it there, do we downgrade it, or vice versa, depending on what they see in the replay center. White from the corner. Big rebound, Wagstaff. Cotton from the top. Still a little off. Oh, geez, he's usually so good in those situations, Bryce Cotton. The kickouts off the offensive boards. He'll know that was an opportunity missed. And he flicks it away from Nathan Sobey. Disappointed with his effort down the other end, so have to have an impact down this end. So he's 0 for 11 from the field. Is the word from the stat man, Mark Slocum. He's never gone 0 for before in his NBL career, of course. Never Two. ask a question you don't know the answer to. I knew you would know the answer to a question that I asked, whether you knew it or the great stat man. Uh, but no, stat this man. is bad news here. In the meantime, Anthony Drimmick hobbling, so we'll keep an eye on that. But give us the stat whilst you're at it. This is bad news. Yeah. Jeez, he's been really good tonight. Hasn't piled on the points, Anthony Drimmick. Five points two boards but has had a really big impact defensively two for 16 is his worst field goal percentage ever Bryce Cotton against the Taipans big loop Sobe back to Lou floater off the glass from the big guy magnificent one point game Magic with Lou staring him down. Wagstar. White. Shot clock winding down. Wagstar. White from way outside. Rebound big. Grabbed by Tanner Krebs. Opportunity for the Bullets to take the lead back. They led by four at half time, the Bullets. They trailed by five at quarter time. Kadee. And Big Lou, Quan Ching Lu, huge rebound. Can he get it back up? He didn't get fouled, he didn't get it in. Well, that's what he's out there for, though. Try and crash the glass, get an extra possession or two. Just got to be solid on the defensive end, because oh, we know that he's going to be tough in the ball screen. Those kind of positions right there. Good drop-off pass, Majuk benefits. And we just get stuck in no man's land. Anthony Drew, this is not oh, good yeah, at all. Yeah, we yeah. talk about a man who had off-season surgery, coming back, rehab to come in and as you said Liam was having a really good impact in this game only scored the five points but defensively he was making plays towards the rim a couple of assists let's hope that's not as bad as he's making it out to be because body language often the best indicator and that's not a great indicator Madjuk in the meantime puts it back in well Brisbane Bulls need a timeout James Duncan calls it everything going Perth's way Right there, good impact from Majuk Majuk on the offensive glass, and they're going at Chuan Ching Lu. Making life difficult for him at the defensive end. Putting him in pick and roll, then the help from Chuan Ching Lu in the paint. They drop it behind, and Majuk finishes at the rim. And then Wagstaff there taking him off the bounce. And here is, keep an eye on Anthony Drimmick on the other side of the floor. Jeez, there was a couple of feet in there. Wondering whether he maybe stepped on someone and went over on something the wrong way. But straight away, you can see just at the top of your screen there. And so did he stand on someone's foot? Oh, that's the one thing. There's a lot of there's a couple of feet in there and immediately knew, and that's what transpired afterwards. And as we said, had the off-season surgery, so hopefully that's nothing too bad. And annoyingly if you're a man who's had troubles with injuries you kind of have that sense and you understand when something is perhaps not right so let's hope that, that reaction is just maybe a bit of fear from Drimmick about what it could potentially be and it's not as bad as we think because Brisbane Bullets will need Anthony Drimmick's input this year there's no doubt about that you kind of would hope that maybe it was something just a small bit of re-aggravating by stepping on someone's foot you don't want anything where there's no contact or no stepping on someone's foot something completely 
random out of nowhere. That's always a bad sign. One minute to change left to three-quarter time. A little bit of momentum back the Wildcats way. Bullets have possession. Addison. Kadee. Lamar with some space and some class. Rattles it down. Landfield hands it up. Madrill had a good patch until then. Patterson the rebound. Kadee to run the play again. Patterson, same spot, same result. Love it. James Duncan, go to the well. Lamar Patterson, the little Iverson cut across the two bigs on the free throw line. Catch knocks it down and then run the same play again, says the coach. Back to back three balls from Patterson. In the blink of an eye, bullets back in front. And they'll get it back here for the last shot of the quarter. Law had to put it up from long range. No love. Wildcats get it back. Blanchfield to make them pay for not rebounding. Travis with the circus shot on the buzzer. Can't hit it. 57-58. The stage is set for an epic last quarter for the final game of round two. And Lamar Patterson has set it up for us. Well, he has. And back-to-back -back plays. It's worked once. Go back to it. Test if he's hot. That's what Lamar Patterson does. Starting to feel good as we get to the last 10 minutes. We'll see what happens. Final game of our triple header this Sunday afternoon. NBL 22. Next level. And this has been a next level kind of game. We might have saved the best of the round till last. Been the toughest place in Australia to win the jungle RAC arena in Perth the mighty Perth Wildcats and the Brisbane Bullets in the final game of round two Brisbane Bullets have lost their last six games in a row here against the Wildcats that's how tough it's been to win here but they lead by one with a quarter to play big storyline three quarters down Bryce Cotton five points all from the free throw line all of 11 from the field and none of that matters if you let him get off in the fourth quarter and win a game. So they've got to stay locked in. They've done a tremendous job of just trying to wear him down. He's missed a lot that he would normally make. And that comes from just wearing him down, following him every single step as soon as he gets onto the floor. And down this end, well, I know it's been a three-quarter time break, but get the ball in Lamar Patterson's hand. 
And he takes it inside this time. Fooled a lot of them. There we go. Back to back triples to end the third quarter. And here on the attack. And Bryce Cotton starts this last quarter getting some rest. So over to you, Vic Law. Three point doesn't go. Patterson the rebound. Here James Duncan just saying run it again and why not? You've got the two threes before the three-quarter time. And you've got a layup. Just keep going until Wildcats do something to stop it. Patterson takes it in. Spin move off the glass with the fadeaway. It was tough, but he had the confidence to attempt it. Kevin White. Vic Law heads baseline. Harrison affected his shot. Mad jumps with the putback, doesn't work. Kadi, a little touch, was dainty enough to stop it from travelling out. Can the Bullets put a little bit of a lead in the bank here while Cotton's on the bench? Rattles out from the hand of Ding Ding. Travers, Law, it's been their go-to man. Look at he, it's been a little cold. Bullets have shut their old guy down at critical times. Blanchfield played a huge role. Trademark two-pointer from just outside the paint doesn't go. So not going to plan early last quarter for the home team. Harrison, not on the slam page there. A stop, the feed. Kevin White, another good kick ahead there from Luke Travers. Good run from Kevin White, got ahead of the pack. And Travers yo, yo, yo. found him with the bounce pass. So Cotton comes back in. James Duncan, he's got two of his big stars getting a little rest. Robert Franks and Nathan Sobey. On the bench, he's just going to hold them for an extra couple of possessions or two. So Patterson is the guy. Kadee. Patterson. Oh, oh, yes! How good was that? Oh, he's feeling good, Lamar Patterson. This is what we expected. Hasn't missed from outside, but looked like he came into this season with just a better mindset. Kind of back to what we know, that MVP caliber player. We know he can take over games like That's something he did for the Bullets. Oh, Blanchfield. He's having some sort of night. Up to 14 points now, four or five from outside. But Wildcats need an answer for this man, number 13. He's gone up another gear this game. Oh, Kadee got confused in the air. Ding, ding. Got Wagstaff in the air and got hammered. Well, here is Lamar Patterson sticking it over Todd Blanchfield. And then Blanchfield with the response. Kadee kind of caught in no man's land, came off the shooter. And he drilled it. And you say the answer for Lamar Patterson. Well, they showed it a little there. The Wildcats throwing a double team at Patterson on the wing. Get it out of his hands. Make others beat us. Damian Martin. I listened in with Brisbane for the three-quarter time. And I love when players step up, in particular going into that fourth quarter. This time it was led by Jason Kadee and Nathan Sobey addressing the defensive rebounds. Even though they're doing a great job on the rebound count, they're smashing the Wildcats. They feel like they're letting them get too many second looks late in the second, in the third quarter. And then when James Duncan came in, he was all about, let's get the ball to Patterson and ride on his coattails. And we're seeing exactly that. Well, looking at this as a potential upgrade, and it's the play on the ball or excessive contact. And Hard to tell, but the way Deng Deng was holding his face when he landed on the floor, Jesse Wagstaff definitely originally was trying to go up for the block, but then got caught in the air. And there wasn't a whole lot in it, so there you go, normal foul. That's why it gets reviewed, just in case, as we said, you can see Deng Deng was just holding his face on the ground, so kind of signals to the referees, maybe we need to have a look at this, but in the end, not much of it. And Still gets his two free throws anyway. Every play a little more important, more time that kicks down inside seven minutes down. And that rims out. Can't nail both. Bryce Cotton. This is normally Bryce Cotton time in games. When it's tight, his team needs him. Law. Bryce. 
Patterson is grill, peering through a picket fence of fingernails, and he still lands it. Bryce Cotton o'clock, midway through the fourth quarter, tight game. You can hear James Duncan on the sidelines saying, make him a driver. They've done such a good job of forcing him inside the three-point line into contested floaters throughout the afternoon. But there, rises up and knocks it down. Lamar Patterson tries to do likewise. The little tip didn't work. Oh, yes, it did from Harrison. Oh, good effort from Harrison, just sticking with it. Having an impact on the glass down, nine rebounds. Liam, you're right, Bryce Cotton. Just the respect of his level of greatness to have James Duncan yelling to make him a driver when he's 0 of 11 at the time and struggling and coming up short. You just know it doesn't take much, and here he goes again. Got Tanner Krebs for company this time. Hands it to Travis, the trust in that, and the rebound. Vic Law, awesome. Still a chance to take the lead with this possession, the Wildcats. Cotton steps it in and loops it in with the left. That's what he can do. You want to make him a driver? Well, he'll go to his left hand, float it in over the side of the rim. He's just such an incredible scorer. You've just got to make it as tough as you possibly can and then live with the results. Foul call there, but it's the big issue, isn't it? Here we go. Bryce Cotton is seeing Lamar Patterson switches out, and that was when James Duncan screaming, make him a driver. Because he always believes the next one's going in. Well, you make him a driver, just up with the left, and talk about all the greatness. And we've seen it over last season, the years past, though teams do stop him for a bit. Unbelievable. 67, 66, big five minutes to come. So who does take control in this five minutes then, Pete? Well, you think you keep going to Bryce Cotton right now. Why not when he's starting to heat up? And the best part about it is you've got Todd Blanchfield, who's played really well. He might become a little beneficiary of getting those extra passes because now everyone's locked in, everyone's worried about Bryce. That's why this timeout's coming. James Duncan, all the good work they've done leading up to now, doesn't matter if they can't somehow keep him quiet enough to win the game. And it will be disappointing because they have done a really good job overall. Nice Cotton gets some sustenance. Will earn sit down for both teams. One point game. One point was the margin at three quarter time. Four was the margin Brisbane's way at half time. Five was the margin at quarter time. The Wildcats way. Another monster house in the jungle, which is great to see. By the way, if you think you can shoot a full court shot at an NBL game, thanks to Latrobe Financial, our Latrobe Financial Sharp Shot, head to the NBL website page and enter for your chance to win to shoot for $100,000 in the Latrobe Financial Sharp Shot. And if you miss your first shot, don't worry, you get a second go from half court for $50,000, thanks to Latrobe financial as Kadi takes it to the hole brilliantly good execution out of the timeout always want to make sure you come out of those huddles and get a bucket out of what you've drawn up Kadi assessed his options kept it finished at the cup cotton high off the glass draws a foul counted and it's going to be a goaltend and so we said that's what the timeout was for from james duncan because bryce cotton's rolling now made his last couple of field goals got the goal 10 there but he is in ultra attack mode because for once he's starting to feel good he was just trying to get the first one to drop for three quarters got it on a three ball and now things are starting to open up for him and the bullets have to just lock back in so for all their good work could come undone in the last four minutes almost every possession in this last quarter has been a lead change Sobey tries to keep that run going but can't cotton dances his way to the top the crap were up. You hear them roaring. It was deafening. Sobe. He's got a little push from Cotton then. He's just trying to get a little on the front foot here, Nathan Sobe. Missed that three point attempt here, trying to be aggressive in transition. While Cotton's heating up, Sobe, he hasn't scored in the second half. Mm. Nine points at half time, stuck on that number, four of 12 from the field. 
Franks spins inside the paint, can't finish, can't get it back. Law comes up with it, crowd roaring again. Wagstaff, Travis, Kadee took the contact. Madjuk tries to feed it out, they lose it. Tanner Krebs doesn't want to waste it. Kadee, little push to Sobey, up fake, got Law in the air, back to Kadee, can't finish it. Travis, huge rebound. Monster stop for the Wildcats, that. Well, it's beautiful offense on the boards, pushing in transition, and then an unselfish pass, good touch pass from Kadee. Got it back from Nathan Sobey, just came up short. Travis passed up the opportunity to have the shot and then turned that one over as well. Sobey waits. Doesn't want to waste this one. We're down to three minutes. Hands it up. Drive to the basket. Put the contact, Robert Franks. Strong finish from Franks. And down the other end, Travers just lacking the confidence to let it fly. He's 0 for 4 from long range. He was open there, needs to just load it up and shoot it. Bryce with a step back three. Oh, had a good look in and then jumped back out. And they are the step back threes he normally nails. Bryce Cotton, four time leading scorer, three time MVP. Not quite able to do it yet, and that dish was great. The finish from Krebs was horrible. Great vision from Jason Kiddie. And set Krebs up beautifully. He blew the layer. Law takes on Krebs. Fade away too. Wow. So he takes it himself. He faked. Put the shot up and doesn't finish this time either. Well, put too much English on that, Nathan Sobey. Not into the part of the defense and just try to be a little special with it. Travers, Madjuk, the foul. Well, Sobey put too much English on it late in the game in game one and got ejected. <laughs> Let's hope he keeps his composure here because this one's still up for grabs. If he can nail a couple of big ones or find some handoffs. 70 to 71. He kind of, would he feel like he owes them after the last? He's got a few credits in the bank. Oh, wow, geez. 24 points in that ball game. Nathan Sobey. But, geez, they will be ruined those last couple of misses. Two finishes right at the rim for the Bullets. Krebs on the reverse layup. Sobey right there in a really close game in the jungle. First one rims out from Magic. Next one. Under two. Under two. Under two minutes. One. Again, these two teams meet here again this coming Friday night. Back-to-back -back games. Two. No. That one rattles its way down. They lead by two. Been good again. Majuk, Majuk. Nine points, nine rebounds, three on the offensive end. Just hustling underneath. Robert Franks. Tried to shake and bake. Didn't quite work on Wagstaff. Takes it in with the hook. That didn't work either. He was dancing with it a lot. The three-point line, Robert Franks, but he just didn't go anywhere. He was just having the ball on a string, and in the end, slowly back down. Jesse Wagstaff and couldn't get the finish. Law. Big rebound to pull down. Magic pulls it down. And it's ripped away. Just wanted it more. Vic Law. One minute left. Cotton. You just can't keep a good man down. A <laughs> Bryce Cotton o'clock. He knows what time it is. Late in the fourth quarter. One possession game and the ball lands in the MVP's hands. Four-point play opportunity. Oh, my goodness. Bryce Cotton, who's all of 11, started to get on a little roll. Robert Frank's just saying... Whatever you want to give, I'll try and late contest. Well, you can't do that because you cleaned him up. And there it is. Bryce Cotton the clock. <laughs> Jeez, it's a lonely island to get put on. Bryce Cotton out on a switch. We're going to have a coach's challenge here. And that's James Duncan probably thinking, I'm calling a timeout anyway. Mm -hmm. I may as well have a look at it. Because it's really all you're going to do is save a point because he made the shot anyway. So that's probably what he's saying is... I'm just going to have a timeout anyway. I may as well challenge it. Robert Franks took up his landing space. And that's going to be a foul, I would think. I agree. 
And that's the only thing I can assume from, from James Duncan is just thinking, I was going to call a timeout anyway, so why not challenge it? And also probably we've seen a lot of Bryce Cotton draw these fouls over the course of his career where a lot of people are saying, I'm not taking out his landing space. He just jumps four, but this is the way he shoots with his legs jump out. But Robert Franks, look where he finishes the closeout. It's almost alongside him. If you look at the vision on the right, right there, Robert Franks' left foot is behind Bryce Cotton. Yeah. So he has cleaned up his entire landing space. That, I would assume, is probably going to be a foul. I know he's on the side. Yeah, he's on the side, but there's contact. Exactly right. But I have, we have been wrong plenty of times. <laughs> it could be clean. <laughs> okay. Coach's challenge is unsuccessful. The call stands. The foul is on number one for a hit. Three points count. One shot. They lose their timeout and their coach's challenge. Perfectly explained by Peter Hurley, Melbourne United Championship winner. Liam Santa Maria, former NBL player, number one Juno in the land. Coach's challenge unsuccessful. You heard why. And the refs confirmed it. And some, some missed opportunities for Brisbane in these last couple of minutes. We talked about the blown layups, then they called Robert Franks' number, cleared out the whole side of the floor, isolation play, but he had Sobe open in the opposite corner, didn't find him, and then gave up a couple of offensive rebounds. You called it beautifully, Dwayne. Vic Law just wanted it more than anyone else. Ripped it out of Harrison's hands. The ball lands with Cotton, and he makes the bullets pay. You saw that sea of red in the grandstands here at RAC Arena. Bryce Cotton is one of the reasons why. In fact, lock it in to your schedule wherever you're watching this around the world. Perth Wildcats games, Bryce Cotton, arguably with the best import that's ever come to Australian shores, and he's done it again in this one. Almost rope a dope style. It was cold early, but shooters just keep shooting. And when it was crunch time, he delivered. 57 seconds left. Not quite over yet, though. 76 to 70. Time enough here if they can get the basket and the stop. We get the basket first. Harrison. Sobe. Takes it himself to the hole. He was hammered. It's still... The bullets ball and no foul. Oh, Wildcats to Jesse Waxdale. I think he has a point here. Would have been a bit of a preemptive call because I don't think the ball went out of bounds. That's what Jesse Wagstaff saying, and that's what it looked like. Saying that the ball didn't go out, and I'm not sure if it. Do you want to review it or you 100% sure? It can be reviewed because otherwise it's probably yes, it's not in. It's not in it's dispute. Okay. It's, it, the call's correct, guys. Guys, we've already looked at it. It's correct. It's correct. And that's why we have the new rules in now. So it's already been sent up to the replay centre. They've had a look at it, and it's touched the line. And all of that last 15 seconds of dribble by me, you can... <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Patterson has it. Hands it up. Sobe time. Yeah, baby. Game on again. 45 seconds left. Can they get a stop? Three-point game. Of course he was going to drop the three, Nathan Sobey. The junkyard dog doesn't stop fighting. And here he is fighting Blansfield, oh, wow. takes the contact and gets the turnover on cue. Oh my, Nathan Sobey knocks down the triple, cuts the lead in half for the Wildcats and then pressures Blanchfield in the backcourt. The Bulls do a good job of keeping it out of Cotton's hands and then Extends the forearm ever so slightly. Sobe definitely accentuates the contact. And that's an yeah, offensive foul. Scott, Marison, hey, Scott Morrison originally, I think, was saying, I want a timeout, I want to challenge that. But as you said, Liam, I know Nathan Sobe might have sold it, but just the extension of the arm is enough. I think Paul maybe might have said that to Scott Morrison, just saying, look, oh no, we might have a coach's challenge in the end. And, might not be a whole lot of force behind it because he has sold it well, Nathan. So, but the extension of the arm from Top Blanchard just to say, get off me, is going to be hard to overturn. But, well, the bottom angle, bottom right angle looks like that's the one that shows not a whole lot of force in it. If you look at just a kind of bump, but it's the so bump the that made Nathan Sobe go and then the extension of the arm. Hey, sorry, hang on. Yep. All right. All right to go. 
coach's challenge is successful. Wow. Oh, the call is Huge. overturned. Wow. How about that? So clearly, as you were saying, Pete, they call it as a, as a lack of force, a lack of impact on the contact. He definitely it's this extends angle the here. arm. Sobi tries to put all kinds of mayo and mustard on the hot dog. I still thought it was going to be maintained as an offensive foul, but Scott Morrison wins the coach's challenge and the Wildcats maintain possession. Well, that's what I would think would have to come down to. Without hearing exactly the reason why it was the lack of force, and it was that angle there you could see. The other two looked the, with the extension, and Nathan Sobey did sell it well, but I, I'm as shocked as you are. I still thought that was probably going to be upheld as an offensive foul. But anyway, Brisbane have to try and get a stop here. You don't need a foul. Shot clock's at 17. There's 38 seconds left. You just got to have a really solid possession. If they do miss, you've got to get the rebound. Wagstaff wants to give it to Cole. Oh, wow. oh, he traveled, so they get oh, the man. stop anyway. Wow. High level of pressure from the Wildcat, from the Bullets, doing everything they can to keep the ball out of Bryce Cotton's hands. Nervous faces in the jungle. So shot clock, game clock differential. They need three points to tie it. Lamar steps in on Blanchfield. He lost it. Crowd roar. Who's got it? Possession arrow. That Brisbane ball. They get another chance. Lamar Patterson. And I am glad that he's got downhill, tried to attack because you don't need to settle for a three this early. I'm oh, very lucky to get that jump ball and Red Army probably thinking, where's the jump ball gone? We need the jump ball back in the game. Here's some bullets, get another crack at it. So you can see that shot clock, game clock differential. Crowd are up out of their seats. They're not on the edge of their seats. But we are here and you are at home. This could be the finish to beat all finishes. Bullets try by three, have possession. 20 seconds left. Patterson one way, then the other. Manchuk in his grill, takes oh, it. Oh, wow. Drops it. Oh, my we might goodness. The finish <laughs> to beat all finishes. Oh, Lamar Patterson coming up big in a big moment. They run the same play that they ran for Nathan Sobey towards the end of regulation against Tassie. Didn't get the look in the corner. He said, let me go one-on-one -on -one with Majuk Majuk. Step back, bucket, tight ball game. Big Lou loves it. And why wouldn't you? But I'll tell you what, what he's done, Lamar Patterson's been outstanding. It's good to see him in this mindset, and attacking and feeling good about himself. 13 seconds on the clock in the jungle, and Bryce Cotton has started to feel good in the last 10 minutes. Well, we've seen this story a lot of times, but Lamar Patterson, as we said, we expected a bigger year from him. This is the stuff that we wanted to see. Well, he had six points to his name with a couple of minutes to go in the third quarter. Lamar Patterson, and he'd been facilitating and getting other guys involved just like that, hooking up Harrison down low. And then they started running this action. Little Iverson cut, getting him open. Then he turned the corner and he got to the rim after back-to-back -back triples to end the third quarter. And then he has been feeling good ever since. Right now he's on 20. Game high and none bigger than those three. So it's a Bryce Cotton shot to take. It's his house. Well, it is. If you can somehow get the ball in his hands in a one-on-one, -on -one, don't be surprised if the Bullets throw a couple of guys trying to at least semi-run at him to make him give the ball up early. How many times have the Bullets oh, been no. beaten by Bryce Cotton? Oh, no. Take a deep breath now while you can. 13 seconds left. Tied ball game. Oh, they've gone to the ex-Bullet, are they? Vic Law. The ex-Bullet. Pull up two. Rims out. Bullets get a late chance from half court. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What a way to walk off finish that would have been. <laughs> 76 apiece. Stick around. Go nowhere. We've got overtime. Oh, shades of Cedric Jackson. Oh, my. About that last second half court heave from Nathan Sobey went in and out. We've got five more minutes to play. Well, I love they went with Vic Law. I know it's strange to say when Bryce Cotton was playing the way he did, but a chance to ice his old, his old club, send them home after all the off-season talk, and well defended really Lamar well Patterson. Defended. That's a tough look, but Nathan Sobey 
the awareness and the strength to get it off. Didn't even get a full swing into it. I tell you what, NBL 22, we're only in round two. And <laughs> we've seen a bit of everything. We made a lot of mistakes today, okay? We made up for them a lot in this half. We didn't have enough quite time to make up for them all. Now you have five more minutes. Start fresh. Everybody's talking. We're back to our regular defense. 40, 30. 30. What do you want? 30. 30, okay? So Jesse's dropping as well. All right, get in the body. It's the guard's job for no threes, okay? You did a good job. Be ready to throw the ball. out here to They're gonna be chasing you hard behind you. Sometimes just stop and see what you got. All right? Fellas. Take care of the ball. Shot selection. D rebounds. Trust it. Trust each other. And we'll be good. You good? There we go. Damien Martin. Oh, the atmosphere down here is absolutely electric. First to Bryce Cotton shot, then we see a huge Patterson three, and then almost a half-court game winner from Sobey. It's had it all today. It's been a game of runs. It's a game that deserves to go to overtime, and I can't wait for the next five minutes. And a gem from the stat man. Historic stuff from the Bullets. No team before Brisbane right now has ever played two overtime games to start a season. They went down in OT to Tassie on opening night. And in the final game of round two, they're going to extra time with the Wildcats. They were without Sobe for overtime in that one because he was sent to the change rooms. He's out there now. This is massive. Lost their last six games in a row oh. here. The Bullets to the Wildcats. Addison, a little poke away. Cotton gives it away. Cotton gets another chance from outside. Poke away, might get a third go here. Wagstaff gives it to him. Oh, and Patterson has put him on his backside. Come on, come on, he ran into him pretty hard. Is that a three, boys? Here, James Duncan there just saying, look, we might not agree with it, but it's okay. Let's just huddle back up. Stay composed because. A lot of us thought once Bryce Cotton got going in the fourth quarter, Perth were potentially just going to run away with it. Once again, the Bullets have just fought back. And that man's been terrific tonight. So that call didn't go your way. Lamar's just got to lock back in. Plenty left in this one. He's got to hang his hat on that defense. One-on-one -on -one defense with Bryce Cotton. He knocked the ball away and then made it into a tough three-ball contested. That was excellent. Travis to Wagstaff. He takes the responsibility with two left on the shot clock. Bullets get a chance to take the lead back. Kadee. They were blown away in overtime in game one against the Jack Jumpers. Sobey wasn't there. He hands it to Lamar. Big rebound pulled down. Franks. Patterson. Single figure shot clock again. Takes it inside. Takes it to the rack and drops it. They lead. So he's so tough, Patterson. When I mean, he starts slicing down the lane, peeling off that ball screen. Has the touch on the finish. First team to score in overtime. Bullets take a two point lead. Bryce Cotton time, and he rattles it down. Crowd back into it. Well, he's up to 19 points. Five of 19 from the field, three of 12 from three. And the Perth can scrape out a win here. No one is going to remember about his struggles in the first three quarters. Just his heroics in the fourth and what he can do in this remaining three minutes. Harrison hands it back to Sobey. And took the rebound. Back to Price. Spins away from Kadee. Sizes up Lamar Patterson. Wagstaff. Cotton. Vic Law. Double teamed, winds the clock down. Travis takes it inside. Harrison with him. Forced an errant shot. They get the stop. Look, Travis just coming up a little ginger on that one. Around the waist and you pulled him round. You wrapped around the waist. You that now? Eleven red. Scott Morrison not happy with it and just having a nice conversation. 
has gone about it the right way. Yeah, as Mum's watching in Canada. So. <laughs> Cheerio. You saw down the other end the Bullets double teaming Vic Law. They're coming off Luke Travers. So Scott Morrison, he takes Travers out of the game, brings in the shooter Todd Blanchfield to make that a tucker, tougher coverage for the Bullets. Lamar Patterson has risen to the moment. There's been pressure on him from way outside. Oh, wow. As good as it gets from Lamar Patterson. Vintage Lamar Patterson. Damien Martin. Yeah, just a quick update on Anthony Trevor. He left the game. Oh, sorry, David. <laughs> Not a problem. He left the game briefly in the third quarter. He's been in the locker room since, but just came back out to cheer on his teammates in overtime. But sadly, that ankle is iced up. He does look like it's quite painful still. I spoke to the physio. He simply said, nah, he'll be fine. But he wasn't very convincing with that analysis. <laughs> well, it's been this kind of game every possession almost a change in the lead wildcats back in front thanks to Vic law soby moves inside oh he's pushed he hit the deck hard so did jesse wagstaff big players making big shots patterson and law trade three-point hits as soby on the attack here trying to hop his way into the lane and that foul on Wagstaff will send Sobey to the strike. Bonus, guys. That's not shooting. That's not shooting. We've got to review the half. Four, four. you got to check that. You passed it. There you go, just to clarify, in overtime, it's just three team fouls each before you're in the bonus. Scott Morris was saying that Nathan Sobey was passing it, which is correct, but now he's saying he also travelled. And... <laughs> Pick one or the other, Scott. He's, he's, trying, he's, he's trying everything. He's throwing arrows at it. At the board, darts at the board here. Sobey with a chance to tie it up and potentially take the lead. The big stars, Bryce Cotton, MVP last season. Nathan Sobey third in MVP voting last season. And they have stepped up big time in this one when required. Sobey at the line to give them the lead now with 1.46 left. He's tied it up, 82 apiece. And it rims out. And a hush through the jungle. Bryce Cotton, Lamar Patterson watching him like a hawk. Vic Law. Robin Duo doing it beautifully. That's Big so Law tough. Time. So tough. Big Law hit a big three in the corner in front of the Bullets bench. And as you said, they're going to go to that little one-two punch because they've won to have got Perth in this position. Addison gets a screen. Lost it. Lost it. Lost it. Beautiful execution from the Wildcats. They get the switch here, the Wildcats. So Vic Law takes Sobey into the block. He knows he can shoot over the top. Has the height advantage, knocks it in. The Wildcats take the lead. Yeah, nicely explained, Liam Santa Maria. There you go. They're, just... They're going to have a look at this just to make sure. Minute 15 on the clock. Big possession here. If it is a turnover from Lamar Patterson, Perth can get a little breathing room if they can get a bucket. But not much in this game. It's just going to get a quick review and see, make sure they get it correct. This angle on the right, that's what they're going to be looking at. And good luck to them. <laughs> There's a lot of hands, a lot going on in there. And might actually be that angle on the left initially that sees Majuk Majuk. If you watch Majuk's right hand, potentially. Not a running situation. Here we go. Perth ball, can they create a little buffer with a good shot here? Yeah. Stayed with the court on the floor because it wasn't definitive for it to be overturned. Vic Law from outside. Big rebound to pull down. Soby time now. Vic Law had a chance. Soby, three for the lead. Two to tie it up. Takes his time. Blanchfield staring him down. Steps inside, takes it to the rack, and drops it. Wow. 
Savvy play from Sobi. Patient, then a good flip of the screen from Harrison. Cleared the way for Sobi. Straight line drive to the rim. Bryce Cotton. Step back three. Big rebound still to get. Bullets come up with it. Huge rebound, Robert Franks. See that shot clock, game clock differential to the Wildcats. Should get it back. Bullets can take the lead. Overtime. Ten seconds. Sobey tries to hand it. And it's still a Bullets ball, but four left on the shot clock. Well, got lucky there. Pass was on, just wasn't executed the right way. And goodness gracious me. There's going to be a timeout here from James Duncan, but what a day of NBL hoops. <laughs> We're finishing with this incredible one from the Wildcats and Brisbane Bullets. They iso Nathan Sobey. Harrison setting the screen, and just the hands and off. Nathan Sobey threw a straight off from the Jook's hip and acknowledges the back door might have been there, just couldn't get the pass through. And what does James Duncan draw up here? Well, we've seen it in these similar situations along the baseline twice now. The end of regulation in Tasmania, they ran that action that got Sobey coming towards that strong side corner. Catch and shoot three ball that sent it to overtime. And then we saw it late in this one as well. They ran it for Patterson. He didn't have the shot in the corner. He took it out to the top and went one-on-one, -on -one, stuck the three ball over Majuk Majuk. Now, they don't have time to mess around with it. Got to get it in and make a play. Does he go back to that action? Or does he potentially use it as a bit of misdirection? Isn't that so we basically saying we don't have to rush? And as you said, Liam, they don't have a lot of time. Four seconds is still enough where you can maybe get a shot fake, sidestep, or maybe a one dribble jumper. The other thing is you don't have to launch a three ball. You the any foul and you go into the free throw line. So that's the point Sobey's making there. Don't feel like you just have to catch it and hoist it. Maybe put it on the deck, get in the lane, put some onus on the officials. Bullets have lost their last six games in a row here to the Wildcats. They haven't won a game so far in NBL 22. Scores level. Bullets have possession for the lead. Fade away. Doesn't go, but they get the rebound. Sobey finds the handle for the walk-off three. The basketball gods are messing with us. <laughs> a double overtime game. My goodness. What a Sunday triple header. But we talked about it. They didn't have to rush it. Robert Franks was acting like there was .4 on the clock. He just caught that. It wasn't balanced. It was well defended by the Wildcats and just rushed it. They got the offensive rebound, but nothing really came of it. It was a tough look. And they did use that same play as misdirection, but they used it as Franks this time. Going to flash to the ball and... You're right, didn't have to hoist it up quite that quickly. Heads up play from Jason Kenny. Knew he wasn't in position to grab that offensive rebound, but kept it alive with the tap out. Gave Sobey another bite at the cherry. And we're going to double OT. This is why they swapped the crew for game three. <laughs> you, just, you just can't imagine, write, you can't write a script like this. Imagine if they, if the fellas had to go all the way through with an extra ten minutes. And oh my, what a game we have enjoyed in the jungle. It always delivers in RAC Arena, and the bullets have been brave. Cotton's been big in crunch time. Vic Laws had some massive plays late. Blanchfield has been really terrific in his first game back from injury. And big players have been trading huge shots, waving at his old team on the bench, Vic Law, at periods of time. In this one, Cotton, after a rough first three quarters, humongous as he takes advantage of Bryce Cotton at clock. Sobey, Patterson, Huge three balls late for the Bullets to keep them alive. But none of them have been the killer blow as these two teams continue to trade haymakers into extra time. Full house. RAC Arena, the jungle. 
I said before play started, final game of round two, we may have saved the best till last. Double overtime. Big story, regardless of what happens here. Four fouls on Cotton, four fouls on Patterson. Sobey hands it up to Harrison. Robert Franks had that shot for the lead moments ago. Doesn't drop that one either. Well, well defended by Bryce Cotton, as you said, Liam. He's on four fouls, keeping his hands straight up. Just hoping there was some sort of help or Robert Franks would fade away and get the first stop. Bryce Cotton tries to feed in, lost it to Vic Law. Bullets knew exactly what they were going to do. Their two big guns were hoping to combine. Sobey. Patterson. He almost looks fresh, Lamar. Three come at him. He threw a crowd. Oh, oh. No call. Brave no call from the officials. Nothing doing there. For Patterson, Bullets will take it out of bounds. Harrison from the inbound. Is it back to Patterson? Hands it back to Harrison. Oh, doesn't drop. Franks. Tip. Nathan Sobey. Awesome. Well, they've been everywhere on the glass, those two players. Robert Franks, 18 points, 11 rebounds. Five of them on the offensive end. And Nathan Sobey, got the 17 points, 7 of 20 from the field, but has 11 rebounds himself. And they've just let Bryce Cotton open, but has struggled on the three ball tonight. Franks, wax up, thought he had that. A couple of really big stops for the Bullets. Chance to make this a two possession game. You just don't beat the Wildcats in the jungle. Bullets a chance to do it. Sobey looks fresh. He flipped that in, finger roll hook. And they lead by four. Bryce has missed his last couple. Big Law. He's from the line. Oh, he drops it though on few. Well, long two. Big Law wanted a three ball. And you hear James Duncan, well, if you could, he was, he's about to lose his voice, but just yelling for everyone to get their hands up. Make the court look as small as possible. See if there's any deflection. Try and bother whoever has the ball. Didn't bother Vic Law at all. Sobe sizes it up. Cotton the rebound. Perth a chance to take the lead back. Vic Law barking the instructions. Gets a screen. Gets to his spot. Oh, wow. Two in a row from that spot. But that was just outside the arc. Well, he learned, his, lead. he learned his lesson. Took a little step back on that one. Knocked it in, feeling really good about himself. Have a look at the scoring. Vic Law and Bryce Cotton both super quiet in the first half. Have exploded. One point lead for the Wildcats. Sobe giving everything he's got for the alley -oop. Franks, a little help from Harrison. Did it the hard way. Uh, guess what? Two minutes left in this seesawing contest. And the Bullets have the lead back. Law into the paint. Fade away two. Well, he's feeling it right now. Vic Law, no better time than in double OT. Seven points in double OT from Vic Law. Over to you, Bullets. Sobey. Hands it up. Harrison under the bucket. Gets it back. Rejected. Travis Harrison, second chance. Travis had it. Lost it. She did the hard work. Did he what? Luke Travis, that's an outstanding effort to talk about his athletic ability, but gets the block and then gets straight back up on that. Luke Travis does it. Just wax up, just getting in his way. Unfortunately, Todd Blanchfield into this game. The last couple of weeks. Rattles its way out. Here is Blanchfield. Vic Law calmly down the floor. Puts it up straight away. Air ball. Strange move. Sobe. Kadee. Franks has to go back and get it. 
was there a tip from Blanchfield? There was. Still a bullet's ball. Still a bullet chance to take the lead back. Jeez. Strange decision from Franks to try to throw. Didn't have the angle on that pass at all. Almost turned it over. Kedi also nicely weighted pass over the top. Nearly had Franks. These guys on their haunches. Both these coaches rolling with their main guys throughout these extra periods. Double overtime thriller. And Lamar Patterson, as sprightly as ever, doing the job inside a minute. Bullets back in front. Over to you, Bryce. Law. Trying to assess, steps into the paint and rejected. Harrison back to Bryce, flick back. Oh, wow. Three in a row from that spot from Vic Law. That's ridiculous. You fight the law and the law wins. My goodness, Vic Law. He has been enormous in this second overtime period. But we're not done yet. So behind off the glass. Harrison has been epic. Kiddie, Franks. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Goodness, oh this God. is next level. It's all happening, Dwayne. My goodness. Big hit from Franks. The jungle going off. Bryce Cotton, what a find for Vic Law as he toes the arc and knocks it down. Puts his team up two. And then Robert Franks ready to answer. It was Law for Brisbane last year. Re re bounces back from getting his shot blocked, steps up and knocks it down. And then the man who replaced him in blue and yellow down the other end. Credit to Terrell Harrison for just staying with it. Majuk Majuk mistimed his jump. And then the awareness from Jason Gaddy to hit Robert Franks, who had never looked like missing from the moment it left his hands. And what an unbelievable game this one is. We're sure it's only round two, fellas. So can you just check with Statman when the last time we had a triple overtime game was? Don't do it to us, Dwayne. Wouldn't mind it. It's been fun. Wildcats get a chance here. They try by one. Their home court. 95-94. We saw at the end of regulation with the chance to win it on the buzzer. They went to Vic Law after Bryce Cotton was hot. We questioned that. We understood because of a little bit of maybe rivalry that Vic Law has with his bullets, mates. You think now, Vic Law's been balling in this overtime period. Do you go back to him or now do you say, look, Bryce, this is your time. Whatever it is, you've got to go early enough because if you do miss, you've got to keep the game extended. So well, you've got, to find, you've got to find the sweet spot. They don't advance it because that would cut it to 14 seconds on the shot clock. So they take it full length of the floor so that the shot clock's turned off. But you don't want to go too late, as you're saying, Pete, because you need to give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. And, geez, what a good problem to have. Bryce Cotton, Vic Law, either one will do. sobi has been playing Cotton tough. But this is when the MVP's at his best. Bryce Cotton with the game in his hands again. We've seen this movie before. Bryce, step back three on offer. Steps it in for the win almost. Six seconds left. Rebound is huge. Rebound is monstrous. They're all in there. <laughs> bullets ball with point four left. It's a bullets ball with point four left, and they lead by one. They'll check the clock. Well, they'll look to at make this. sure the point four is right, and they'll just make sure it is in fact bullets ball. And Robert Franks is down, and might just be a bit of exhaustion. Just laying down, catching his breath, maybe a couple of corkies in there. Decent look for Bryce Cotton. I mean, every good every look is a good look for Bryce, but just going to make sure whose ball this is. And yeah, you can see it off Bryce, unless it potentially came off Harrison's foot. They'll have a look at it. But wow, what a, what a ball game. That's premium hustle from Robert Franks. Getting all over the deck to get that ball. And geez, he, he got to look. Bryce Cotton, he came off that ball screen. Harrison was just a little deep. It was a late contest, and the big fella did a good job not to foul Bryce Cotton in that situation, to make it as tough a shot as possible. It comes off the rim, and the bullets now in pole position to close this one out. So point eight on the clock. They've checked. It's point eight left. They've checked. 
and it's a bullet's ball. Would be an awesome win for the Bullets. They can get it done from here. So a tough thing. position, box seat, call it what you like. Yeah, the tough thing for the Bullets, uh, the Wildcats, Duano. If, if they foul here and they send put the Bullets to the free throw line, no timeouts remaining. Mm. So I can't then call a timeout and advance it down the other end. Very tough spot for Perth. So Patterson with the inbound, point eight left, hands it up. And it's all over. Brisbane Bullets win a double overtime all-time NBL Classic. Well, they're going to have a quick look just to see if there is any time left on it. Because it was a goaltending call. The clock might stop on the whistle. I don't think there is. But anyway, if they do have a look, well done for the Brisbane Bullets. Just every single time Perth went on a little run, they responded. Incredible job from the Bullets team overall. Some huge standouts, some big time players making big time plays. That was a lot of fun. Wow. Who is our footlocker player of the game? Have a little think. We're about to announce it. Tonight's player of the game will receive a $250 footlocker gift card. Robert Franks, 21 points. 12 rebounds. Well, well deserved. I mean, Lamar Patterson's outstanding as well. Robert Franks hit the big three ball, was everywhere on the glass, and he was huge. Just the bullets overall. They're going to take a lot of momentum from that one. Catch your breath. We'll be back to wrap it up. One of the best games in NBL history. A double overtime epic. And the Bullets do the almost impossible. Winning double overtime in Perth, 97-94.
basketball gods had a little bit of fun with us today. A triple header of NBL next level action. Every game was a ripper. And this final game of round two exceeded all expectations. The Bullets winning by three in double overtime. Did it what? Highlights galore. This was just such a fun game. Certain moments we thought maybe the Bullets were just going to break away. Then Perth had a couple of opportunities. Big players making big plays, but Jason can ease awareness to find Robert Franks on the three-point line. That cannot be underdone. That is just a veteran move to find a guy who had had a terrific game along with Lamar Patterson. And we talked about Bryce Cotton and Big Law at halftime saying, where are they? Well, that's how they finish, and that's what superstars do. A couple of big names and big performances not up there as well. Nathan Sobey, 19 and 12. Todd Blanchfield was excellent for the Wildcats. And look, the shooting numbers dropped away a little bit as the game went, it went on, but it was just an epic clash between two really good teams and the Bullets come out on top. And it was high pressure. Every shot was high pressure. Every possession was high pressure. So, yeah, there were runs. Players got hot. Players got cold. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. The ladder, as it stands right now, after two rounds of this... NBL 22 season. Southeast Melbourne Phoenix are a big story amongst a whole heap of big stories out of this round. Well, it was an epic game earlier today, wasn't it? Southeast Melbourne over their arch rivals, Melbourne United, in the throwdown. Three and zip start for them. Illawarra also undefeated in Brisbane. They needed that. Jeez, a loss in the opening round. They're back on 500 and they have another swipe at the Wildcats mm -hmm. in Perth on Friday night. Well, the great news is we only have to wait until Thursday night before it all fires again for round three. Man, well, look at that. Melbourne and Sydney on Thursday. Huge matchups everywhere. Phoenix versus Sydney. Perth and Brisbane rematch. It's all happening. And if you haven't tuned into the NBL so far, <laughs> if Sunday doesn't do it like it has today, I don't know what you're waiting for. So, in the end, Perth led by five at quarter time. Brisbane by four at half time. Bullets by one at three quarter time. A double overtime game that the Bullets ended up winning by three. 97 to 94. Highlights are plenty. It was an epic. Hope you loved it. We love bringing it to you. That was NBL Next Level. We'll see you next week. This program is brought to you by Hungry Jacks and Bunnings Trade.